insects. It's when you and your cousin Insects. Words. What do these have in common? They both evolve. This video is going to be about all the different orders of insects, what their names mean, and how that makes them unique. So it's probably a good idea to start with the default insect pattern that all modern insects are constructed on. I would also explain how words work, but you, you already know that because you're watching this video. Unless you don't, in which case, thanks for watching even though you have no idea what I'm saying. The main features of a common ancestor are called synapomorphies, and here are all the ones leading up to hex Hexapoda. First off, they are metazoans or animals. Movers, breathers, e Okay, that's a bit too early. Maybe just lay down the insect stuff. They have an exoskeleton made out of chitin that doesn't grow along with the rest of their body and they have to shed it to continue growing. They have compound eyes, their body, and especially their limbs, are jointed, cut up into segments, and these segments have consolidated into the head with six segments, thorax with three segments, each of which have one pair of legs, and abdomen with twelve or fewer segments. They possess antennae. Insects have a very decentralized respiratory system, barely a step up from breathing through the skin. They have a few protected areas of skin they breathe through, a pair of spiracles. The jaw is particularly specific. They have two mandibles, two maxillae, and one labium in the middle. We kick things off with... Cola means glue, a word we've encountered before, and embola means that which has been inserted, a wedge, peg, or plug. When we last saw the springtails, they were an example of paternal genome elimination, and that's one of their many synapomorphies. Their English namesake is the furca, this split extension from the abdomen, the fourth of five segments. This can be tensed up, storing energy until BANG! Spring tail. Easy. Its Greek namesake is the colophore, emerging from the first of five segments. This is a big sack of mucus. Its main purpose is to equalize body concentrations by secreting or drawing in fluids and chemicals, but it also secretes sticky fluid that allows the spring tail to stick onto things. The last feature is that the entire jaw complex is surrounded by a gnathal pouch. This will be an important feature, especially as we move into the- Proto is pretty common. It means first or primitive. Ura means tail. Now, it might phase you that there are two omicrons here, but no o's, but I didn't invent ancient Greek transliteration. Now, Protura and Columbula are usually, but not always, said to be in a group together called Elopura, or incomplete tail. Now, the references to tails are a bit inaccurate because only chordates have tails, but let's not split hairs. The name Proto is very apt, though. Their face is still covered in a gnathal pouch, hence the English name. That furca sticking out of their abdomen, it's gone. Their antennae, gone. On. Eyes, gone. That's why they always walk with four limbs out in front. The spiracles are also usually gone, but it's not a synapomorphy. They have nine abdominal segments, but they grow another one every time they molt up to twelve. Diplo is a common one you should recognize as double, and I won't repeat myself on ura. Diplura is often lumped with protura into nonaculata, no eyes, and often all three are lumped into entognatha, internal jaw, but this is rare. As you can imagine, they have no eyes and a gnathal pouch surrounding the mouth. Those double tails are these, the cerci, or forceps. Ten abdominal segments with these emerging from the final segment. This makes them different from the springtails furca, which emerge from the second to last. The diplurans added in a second pair of spiracles on the same segment, and, and now that we've gotten through the non-insect hexapods, we can go into the... Insect means cut into, as in their three-segmented bodies, it itself actually being a calc from ancient Greek. Insects are also called ectognatha because they've finally gotten rid of that gnathal pouch. They also have wings now, thin sections of exoskeleton emerging from the second and third segments of the thorax. They also have two pairs of spiracles on the thorax, though not on the same segment, and they also have some on the abdomen. Evolving wings is very particular to insects, so pay attention to them. Or don't. I Archaeo means ancient, and gnathos still means jaw. Now, insects did evolve wings eventually, but archaeognatha branched off when they had just started, so they decided to renege and never fully evolved wings. Tiny leg-like extensions called styli emerged from the ten abdominal segments of a bristle tail, seven of which have a pair of spiracles, for eighteen total spiracles. Like their cousins, they have cerci, but they've upgraded to three with one giant central one. Unlike their cousins, they possess eyes. We won't see fully-fledged wings until after- Zygos is bridge, and entomos is of course insect. This is in reference to the fact that they were thought to be the missing link between wingless and winged insects. That's not really how evolution works, but go off. The silverfish has 11 abdominal segments with the same spiracles, ending in the same array of three cerci. Cerci have a variety of functions, mostly sensory to magnify sensations of hearing and smell, but they can be upgraded into tools for grappling a female or even a larger threat. Silverfish? 
honestly don't have much else going on. Here, the shape of the tree gets messy, but an average cross-section might go ahead into the word ephemeros doesn't really translate well into English. Oh wait, yes it does, as ephemeral. Ptera means wing, but it's not the wings themselves that are ephemeral. Ptera just became a really common ending for bug names. The mayflies have fully grown wings, with the back one being much smaller and, as usual, three circi. When they first emerge, they don't have wings, but they do have gills. Now, gills are less complicated than you might think. The mechanism for breathing air and water is the same. There's just more oxygen in the air, so they need these giant feathery things to increase surface area. This is a nymph stage, so they then emerge into the adult phase of their life cycle, which lasts only for a couple of hours before death. This is because on their ten abdominal segments, they have zero spiracles for zero total. They do not breathe as adults. The existence of nymphs itself is interesting, but that's a story for... Odonta is Greek for tooth, referring to these giant spikes they have on the mandibles. Kind of weird, because this is not remotely specific to dragonflies, but <laughs> go off again. Dragonflies have an elongated, ten-segmented abdomen with eight pairs of spiracles and two circi at the end. This is the norm for most insects. Their front wings and back wings are nearly identical, and they have these insane, over-engineered eyes that take up their entire face. Dragonfly nymphs mostly resemble adults. They even have partially developed wings. And I hate to say it, but the gills are in their rectums. Recta? They also serve as an important vector for mercury buildup. The nymph stage occurs because of how many features an insect has to construct, so it's efficient to have one stage for rapid development, another stage for slower development, and one completely developed stage. Next to these two, the tree splits, and we can't really say any one splits off, but I can put them in an order. Zoros means pure, and Apteros is, of course, without wings. Ground lice have two forms, one with eyes and wings when the colony needs to spread, and one without. Because of the lack of complexity, the nymph stage mostly resembles the adult stage, and they have no gills. Their circi are small, but their antennae are giant. They lack an ovipositor, which is an extension of the female reproductive system used to carefully deposit eggs. Or, you know, inject them into another living creature? We'll get to that in Hymenoptera, but for now we're on to... Derma means skin, not to be confused with dermo, which also means skin, and is also paired with ptera to form an animal order that means skin wing. Male earwigs have ten abdominal segments, females have eight. Their humble two circi have been upgraded into two giant forceps, but their front wings have been downgraded back into protective wing coverings, or elytra, and their back wings are really bad at flying. The nymphs have no wings, smaller antennae, and smaller forceps. They have crazy ovipositors, and the scientific name of the lesser earwig is labia minor. This video is going to get demonetized. Plecos means braided, and braided wings are in reference to the complex vein sequences spread through the wings. They have ten abdominal segments and two circi, though all of the spiracles have closed. In addition to the two compound eyes, a stonefly has two to three ocelli or simple eyes on their forehead. The nymphs have no wings and are aquatic via gills scattered across their body. When they do develop wings, their wings are really poor for flying, something they have in common with relatives like Orthos is straight, meaning straight wings, in reference to how the wings extend past the 11 abdominal segments when they're at rest. They have giant back legs they use for, you know, grass hopping. They're also covered in these spiky teeth things. Grasshoppers have three ocelli on their foreheads, and the turgites of the thorax are fused into a single pronotum. Grasshopper nymphs are mostly the same as adults, but with smaller wings. Now, let's see the second sexiest insect order. Mantis is from a Greek word meaning prophet or seer, the same root that gave us mind and mental. This is for the same reason we call them praying mantises, that they always have their forelimbs tucked up. These forelimbs are also covered in spines that allow them to grip their prey, what we call raptorial claws. Their front wings have hardened into elytra, but they can still use them to fly, although females have no wings whatsoever. Mantises also have a pronotum and three ocelli. The ocelli are actually multifaceted, which kind of makes them just regular eyes, but they're smaller. All five eyes are arranged four word for ambush predation, preying on insects such as Blatidaea, the light-avoiding insects, are actually not super vulnerable to predators for a couple of reasons. For one, cockroaches have a crazy advanced pronotum that protects their whole thorax and some of their head. Two, their forewings and hindwings are hardened, protecting the abdomen. And three, they fold them up one over the other instead of side by side, so twice as thick protection. The downside is that they don't fly so well. They have these sick antenna and two ocelli. A cockroach's nymph is so similar to the adult, they barely even have life cycle phases. Termites are also Blatidaeans. They're highly derived eusocial cockroaches, which is a very good insult. Eusociality is something we'll discuss under... 
I don't know why I thought that would work. Hymenoptera isn't even in this video. Grillos means cricket and Blatidea is cockroach, but they aren't much like either of them. They lack wings, they lack ocelli, they lack a pronotum, and their eyes are still shrunken. Their nymphs are aquatic, but mostly resemble the adults. They still have two cerci, and they have the same abdominal segments and spiracles. But believe it or not, it isn't the only insect named after two other groups it's nothing like. Mantophasmids are meant to be between mantises and phasmids, which we'll get to. Mantophasmids have no wings, even as adults, but other than that are poorly studied. They lack cerci and the ocelli are gone too, presumably then the mantis part is from their coloration. They're also called gladiators, and here's where the phasmid part comes from. Phasma means ghost or apparition, because you might think there's nothing to see. But then... Stick insects have a long, thin body with nine abdominal segments. Their wings are long and thin, the first two are hardened, and in some cases they've given up on wings altogether. They have two cerci and occasionally have ocelli. Weirdly, whether they have them appears to correlate with whether it has wings and how well developed they are. Phasmid nymphs are mostly like adult phasmids, although they can regrow limbs. The clade Polyneoptera, multiple new wings, includes those, all of these, as well as... Embioptera means enlivened wings, which is a very good name for a creature with no wings. Okay, well, the males have wings. They have two cerci, but the male cerci are asymmetrical. The web spinners said, hey, why should spiders have all the fun? They have silk glands in their front legs that they use to create nests. Lots of insects make silk, but most of the time it's just magic spit, and it's only for nymphs. This is arm stuff, and the adults can do it. The nymphs resemble the adults, although the males have no wings. Next week, we'll cover the other side of the tree.